which my gift was weighed, its love intense is very fresh yet, though but nearly slain, we are passing away, we are
503. Five hundred and three. Five hundred three. Tears I spent in vanity and pride.
136. Two thirty six. <laughs>
Good evening. Good evening. Hope is that on? Okay. Good evening. Try that again. Uh, it's good to see each one of you here this evening. Uh, in the 108th Psalm, a psalm, song or a psalm of David, he writes, Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. So we certainly hope and trust uh, that as we come here tonight, that our heart is fixed, our mind is fixed, uh, that we have prayed and that uh, we're anxious uh, to hear the word of the Lord, uh, that we would grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, that we would um, give attention to his word. So we'd like to welcome Elder Parker with us tonight. Uh, this is his appointment. We're thankful that he's able to be with us. We're thankful that you're able to be with us. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in our congregation tonight. God bless you. We're thankful for you. Uh, we pray the Lord's blessing upon you. Um, so I uh, hope that everyone was able to attend a worship service. This seems like it's been a very uh, prosperous weekend for me. Uh, we had service at No Creek and uh, Saturday and Friday at uh, Liberty Hill and now this evening. Uh, so I'm very thankful for the uh, opportunity to attend meetings, uh, to be strengthened as we sit and listen to the gospel and uh, just rejoice in what God has done for us, what he continues to do for us. Uh, we have so much to be thankful for. Um, as we proceed in our service, we want to try to uh, remember uh, several as we go to the Lord in prayer. It's good to have the Carelocks with us. Uh, Elder Carelock and his family, we're thankful for his uh, fellowship and friendship and ministry. Pray the Lord's continued blessing with him and his family. Uh, we continue to be in prayer for uh, Donna Burris. We ask the Lord's continued blessing upon uh, her, uh, Brother Gene and Sister Jewel, uh, Sister Virginia, Sister Ruth, and her brother Robert. Uh, Honeycutts let us know that Sister Ruth was uh, pretty tired this evening, uh, just not uh, feeling up to it. So we hope and trust the Lord would bless her. Um, continue to be in prayer for Clyde Pickler and Teresa Long, Karen Smith, uh, her daughter Casey and her upcoming delivery. Scheduled date is May 27th, which is right getting close. May 27th of this year. Yeah, it's really close because this is May. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're looking forward to that. We pray the Lord's blessing uh, in that. Um, our friend uh, Andrew May, the recovering disabled veteran, uh, he's getting along well. Uh, his family is uh, very encouraged, and uh, they're waiting for his return uh, back to North Carolina. So uh, we're thankful for that. Um, want to continue to be in prayer for uh, Elder Sonny Huckabee and his recovery as well as uh, Elder Joe Holder and um, Gary Oots. We pray the Lord's continued blessing upon them. Um, is there anyone else you uh, have that you'd like to call out? Uh, Brother Kim? Jeanette? Could you speak up a little bit? Okay, uh, Sister Jeanette, uh, malignant tumor in her bladder, so uh, she has upcoming surgery on the 29th. Somebody else have? Oh, thank you. Uh, we want to remember Sister Wanda, her continued uh, stay at home, uh, and her son Dwayne. So we pray the Lord's blessing upon that. Uh, Brother uh, Bob Hooven is uh, from No Creek, is scheduled to have. Uh, some surgery on this upcoming Tuesday. Um, so we uh, want to be in prayer that uh, everything would be well with Brother Bob and uh, Brother Steve Bailey is having some cataract surgery from No Creek uh, tomorrow. So we hope and trust uh, that all would go well with that and think of him in prayer. Uh, is there anyone else? Okay. No one else being mentioned, we'd like to stand and sing a hymn and ask Elder Carelock if he would open service with prayer, and uh, we would have a mind to pray for him and with him and for each one that's in attendance tonight, and then we'll have uh, Elder Parker. 
come forward to bring the word to us. Brother Gene, what number? 518. Number 518. I love my Savior Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this wonderful opportunity that we have to be here at Meadow Creek. Lord, we thank thee for thy greatness, thy goodness, the very many blessings which we have, which we know is taught, are taught all come from thee. Lord, we ask, in short, that thou would continue to bless us according to thy mercy in the future, just as much as thou hast in times past. Please forgive us for our sins and shortcomings. Help us to turn away from them. Please be with this service that it would be pleasing to thy, to thy will. It would be according to thy will and glorifying to thy name. Lord, we pray especially for the preaching that it would be done in such a manner that it would be done in the power and the demonstration of the Spirit that we would be edified by the preaching. Lord, we pray for all those who are sick and afflicted, and those that we may have forgotten to mention. Please forgive us for our failures, but please 
Bless according to thy mercy in the Lord. Lord, we pray for our daily bread. There is daily things which we need, which be supplied to us throughout all of our lives. We thank thee for the blessedness in thy name. We pray that thou continue to bless us and give us wisdom, and give us guidance, and give us brotherly love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Thank you, Caroline. greatly appreciate the opportunity to be with you tonight. It's always a blessing to uh, see you and to uh, worship God with you, our Father, and to praise our wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus. It's, it's a delight to come in to the house of the Lord, to be with the people of God, and to magnify the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, that's what it's all about, is to magnify his name, to concentrate upon him, to set our minds upon those things above where Christ sits at the right hand of the throne of God. It's been a good day, and I trust that the Lord will be with us tonight. I appreciate that prayer. I hope all of you will continue to be in prayer uh, for me as I stand before you that I might preach the gospel to the glory of Christ, to feed your souls, to build you up, to edify you and strengthen you in your most holy faith. It's good to see Brother Eddie, your dear pastor, and it's always a blessing to stand and speak in the name of the Lord. I need his help. And I always need his help. And of course, you need his help too. You know, sometimes we take for granted that the preacher is going to preach to us. So, well, he studied, hopefully, and he has something beneficial on his mind. But you know, it's uh, very important for the congregation to pray for their pastor or for the minister as he comes to preach to them and that he will lift up the name of the Lord Jesus. Tonight, I want to begin in the third chapter of the book of Titus, <clears throat> verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, that we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. The Apostle Paul, writing to the young preacher Titus, here in the third chapter, he begins in a statement that is very 
deplorable concerning God's people who were once in this condition, in this state. You know, when you think about it, it is very painful that we were once here. It is called the corruption of man. The prophet Jeremiah in chapter 17 says that the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who really knows the depth of the depravity of the human heart? and of the corruption of man. But it is described in the Bible that man is a creature that is despicable. He is a fallen. We're all in that condition before that God dealt with us by his grace. It was for our sakes that Jesus came into this world. And on the second epistle that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, he says, and you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Ye you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that we know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know the grace that has been bestowed upon us. We know the grace in truth. We know the truth of God's amazing grace. There are many of God's people, they are saved by grace just like we are. They're just as redeemed as we are, but I don't believe that they know precisely the riches of God's grace in their lives. Though they have grace, but we know the grace of God in truth. You know the grace of God that though he was rich, he was rich. That is, the Son of God was rich, but he came into this world he left all those riches behind, didn't he? He left heaven. He left all the multitude of angels that were around the throne that were worshiping him then in eternity. And yet in the fullness of time, he came down from heaven. He came into this world of sin and sorrow. He took upon himself the form of man. He became a man. God became a man. That's a great mystery tonight. The apostle Paul wrote to Timothy and he says, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God came here into this world. The Son of God unrobed himself with all that he had in the presence of God the Father and came into this world. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. He became poor. He, you know, when he came into this world, he didn't come down a golden stairway. He didn't come with riches as the king, but he came into this world in poverty. In fact, when he was born into this world by his mother Mary, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. There was no place for him in the inn. And so he came where we were in our poverty, in our depravity, in our corruption. We ourselves also were sometimes foolish. That's a very painful thought, but that's where we used to be. Foolish, disobedient, deceived, 
serving diverse lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. That was our estate. That was our condition. But God, but God. You know, Paul wrote in the second chapter of the book of Ephesians, he said, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. But God, who is rich in mercy. So God is rich in mercy. In sending his son into this world, he showed mercy to us, didn't he? Yes, you know, there is a distinction between mercy and grace, and yet they are vitally connected. It is one coin, mercy on one side and grace on the other. But mercy is that which God has delivered us from what we deserved. What we deserve. What did we deserve as sinners? We deserved punishment. We deserved the wrath of God to be poured out upon us. That's what we deserved. But mercy saved us from what we deserved. Mercy, rich in mercy. Oh, aren't you thankful that God is rich in mercy? I am. I'll tell you what, I thank God for his mercy every day. In fact, in the Old Testament, a lot of times it's talking about the mercies of God, plural. That is, there are many branches of God's mercies that he has bestowed upon us and delivered us from judgment, from what we deserved as sinners, as corrupt people rich in mercy and God delivered us from this deplorable condition here that is described in verse three and then in verse four, but after that the kindness and love of God our savior toward man appeared. This is the kindness and love of God our savior. Jesus Christ, he appeared. He appeared in this world. He lived here in this world. The apostle Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy, and he says, who hath saved us, listen, who hath saved us and called us, not according to our works, but according to his own mercy and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. You see, the gospel brings this to light in our hearts. It corresponds to the people of God that have a receiver that are able to receive the message of Jesus Christ. If we're able to receive the message of Jesus Christ, you first of all must be given a receiver. You must have a heart and able to receive the message. You must have ears to hear. We're talking about spiritual ears ears to hear the message of Jesus Christ. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared not by works of righteousness, which we have done. God sent his own son. One of the most popular verses in the Bible that is well known in Christendom. And they quote it a lot. They preach on it a lot. For God so loved the world. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Those two verses describe the love of God in sending his own son and not sparing him for guilty, deplorable sinners like we were and we are. For God so loved the world. Now, there are sincere people, God's people that say, well, God loves everybody alike. He loved everybody, wants everybody in heaven. Sent his son and his son died for everybody. All human beings. I just heard a preacher the other night say that God wants everybody in heaven with him. And he sent his own son. Didn't spare him. That everybody might have a chance to live with God in heaven. If they will only take advantage of it. If they will only believe. If they will only give their heart to God. Then God will receive them. Well, I'm telling you, they got it completely backwards. Because God so loved the world. And that world is a particular world that God so loved. That is not all humanity. That is not all human beings. Somebody says God would be unfair not to give everybody an opportunity or to give everybody a chance. I'm telling you that the amazing thing about this is that God loved who he loved and he sent his son into the world, didn't spare him for sinners that were sinking down and deserve to be cursed forever. But the preventative of that is that God gave, God gave the darling of heaven, his only begotten. God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. To me, the preventing of men perishing or sinners perishing is that God gave his son. The evidence that we will not perish, that is the proof or the evidence that we will not perish is that from our hearts we believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. You see, the believing is not the cause. The believing is the evidence of what God's already done in our lives. The believing didn't bring us out of the deplorable condition that we were in by uh, human nature. The believing is the evidence we have been brought out of that condition and that deplorable pit and that God raised us out of it by his amazing grace. Believing. Believing is the ability to lay hold upon Jesus Christ. Believing. Dead alien sinners can't believe. They can't believe. I heard a preacher one time say, now, it's like this, folks. The sinners are down in a pit. And the gospel is like a rope that is let down in that pit. All they have to do is grab a hold of the rope and the gospel will pull them out and save them for heaven. <clears throat> you know, there's, a, <laughs> there's only one thing wrong with that. It's just not right. <laughs> the sinner's dead down in there. He can't get a hold of the rope. He's dead. If, 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 a, if a man's dead in trespassing and, and sins, he can't get a hold of the rope. He doesn't have any spiritual life. Somebody's going, 
Somebody's got to go down in there and get him out. And Jesus did that. He come down where we were, got us out. He got us out of the pit, set our feet upon a rock, established our goings, put a new song in our mouth, even praises under our God. This is the kindness and love of God our Savior, not by our works, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration. Our hearts needed to be washed. He did the washing and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, that we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life, being justified by his grace. You know, justification means that God has declared us righteous because of what Jesus did. I mean, it's a, it's a really a legal term, that means that God has declared us right with him. And we've been made right with him through Jesus Christ. That we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. I'll tell you what, it's, it's all in here, isn't it? it is. It's all in here. I mean, one, two, three, for five verses, it's all in here. Delivering us from sin, delivering us from death, from darkness, saving us by his mercy, giving us his grace. He has prepared heaven for us and he's prepared us for heaven. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Nothing. <laughs> According to the hope of eternal life, our hope, our expectation is eternal life, the fullness of that which God has reserved for us. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, that we shall see him as he is, and we shall be like him. Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Every man that has this hope in him, this is a hope in us. This is a hope that is in our Savior, Jesus Christ. The expectation of living with him in heaven, in glory, and being made like him, being conformed to his image. He has prepared us already in our heart. We are now the sons of God. We're not waiting to be. We're now the sons of God. But we haven't reached heaven yet. But we're going to. God is going to fulfill that. He's going to bring that to pass. We're going to be with him in heaven. He knows everyone. He's not going to leave any of his little children behind. Every one of them is going to be presented by Jesus Christ. He's not failed. He is a complete redeemer. Isn't that wonderful news? It, doesn't that delight your heart tonight? Doesn't it melt your soul? Doesn't it raise you up? To know he's done this for me personally. He loved me and gave himself for me. When I think about that, my heart melts. He loved me personally. He loved me. If you would have been the only one he loved, you'd have still had to come into this world and go through everything that he went through to redeem you. But there's a multitude that he loved, but it's personal, isn't it, tonight? You personally must worship the Lord for what he's done for you and serve him for what he's done for you. And this is the faithful saying now. These things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. This is our responsibility as children of God, as servants of God, 
to be careful to maintain good works. We do believe in good works. We do believe in serving God. We believe in serving one another. We believe in manifesting that love one to another. Jesus said, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. There is no place uh, like the house of God in this world where we can come in out of this cold world, out of this filthy world and separate ourselves for a little while in divine public worship and concentrate upon what the Lord has done in our lives and give him thanks. This, is, this should be, uh, we should be addicted to this, shouldn't we? This should be an addiction in our life. Can't do without it. I don't see how... There, you know, some of God's people, I don't see how they make it without it. Where would you be tonight as a child of God without his church, without his people, without brothers and sisters in Christ? I'll tell you, it'd be a miserable world, wouldn't it? Yeah. They which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. You know, we need maintenance in our own lives. I do. I have to work on myself every day. Maintenance. Everything you have needs some maintenance done to it. The car you drive, you have to do maintenance on it. If you didn't do any maintenance on it, you wouldn't be, it wouldn't be running. If you didn't take care of it, you couldn't depend on it, could you? The house you live in, you have to do maintenance on that house. I do more than I want to. My wife says, you're going to have to do this and that. I do more than I want to, but I, you know, it's got to be taken care of. And that in our own lives, in our own personal life, we need to be careful to maintain good works. Good works are very valuable and important for us to do in the church wherever we are to speak like we should speak with grace mm -hmm. you know we live in a world where people are just so rude i mean i'm not going to get all on that but it that they're just the respect is just about gone in this old world people are mean as snakes sometimes they're just like a mad dog treat you bad curse you out <clears throat> i've had people to do that but you know what the thing is you just have to go on and and and, and Pray that God will help them. <laughs> you know, the Bible teaches us that we are to love one another. And Jesus said, love your enemies. Now, that doesn't mean I want to have lunch with them every day. But we are to respect people. I mean, people I don't even know. We are to treat them and respect them as human beings. We, we're a light in this world. In fact, the church is a light in the world. We, we're living in a dark world right now. I mean, it's really dark. And it, it seems like it's getting darker all the time. I mean, <clears throat> you, you see all of this. Foolish, disobedient, deceived. These people serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice. I mean, I mean, their behavior is, is like this. We are not to fall into that category at all. <clears throat> we, we're to be what God would have us to be as his children. Put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We're to put him on. <clears throat> But we're living in a world and we're seeing it more and more. The immorality is astonishing in our day and time. We have to stand up against it. We have to speak against it. 
I don't mean that we are to be um, are, are unkind, but we are to be lovers of God in and we are to stand. We got to stand. We got to speak out and speak up. We are against the immoral behavior in our day and time. It's, it's astonishing how this world is going. But it ought not to be a surprise to us that Jesus has already told us that the word of God has told us. Evil men, wicked men shall wax worse and worse. That is in their behavior, in their immoral actions. But thank God we have a church. We have brothers and sisters in Christ. We can come and worship God and look above what all that is going on in our world today. And we have a peace in our heart that passeth all understanding. You know, because we know that God is, he is the governor of all the universe. He's the governor in this world. Yeah. He has the king's heart in his hand. If I didn't believe that, I would be paralyzed with fear. And that's why so many are paralyzed in our day and time, paralyzed with fear. But we as the church are not to be paralyzed with fear. In fact, the Lord over and over again says, fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Dismayed means to be paralyzed with fear. Be not dismayed, I'm with you. I'll hold you. My right hand holds you. That's our peace, that the right hand of Jesus Christ holds us. And he'll not let us go. And may we maintain in our lives, in serving him, in serving one another. And, you know, it's, uh, it's grace that we can approach the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace in time of need and we need him every day don't we we can't we can't go without him we need him every day to help us through the trial tribulation and troubles of this world and in our own personal lives in the world ye shall have tribulation but Jesus says in me, you shall have peace. These words have I spoken unto you, that in me you shall have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. That's how we overcome every day is that he's the overcomer and our trust is in him and his power, his strength and what he's given to us as his people to maintain in our own lives good works to live righteously godly uprightly here in this life to honor and praise the lord jesus christ in our actions our behavior our talk and what we do may we maintain good works as we travel until we leave this world. May God bless you with these thoughts. Praise God for that. We publish the doors of the church open for the reception of members. If there's one or more that would like to have a home here, you have the opportunity to let it be known as we stand and sing a hymn.
I have to tell the Kerlock and the other parks to come on down here and handshake. Uh, Brother Gene, what number? 515. 515. Come on, Brother Dan. There are mansions bright yeah, and fair everywhere over there in we the sunlight of the no, dear safety. We can't the we can't There's the house not made with friends in it did they ever said not he gets to it.
When the comforter comes, he'll, he'll rejoice in your heart. And that's what we have, a rejoicing in our heart because of the goodness of God. I'm thankful for the kingdom here. What joy we would be without. Are there any other announcements? Brother Andy, yes. um, I'd like to announce, uh, I know it's a little bit of time before the next second begins, but we're uh, attempting to get a singing started on the Saturday. Sunday there at Lawyer Springs. Uh, that happens to be uh, at about 6 o'clock for supper. It happens to be after Pleasant Grove's normal Saturday service at 3. So we welcome everybody to come make a day of it and come to Pleasant Grove and, <laughs> and come to that uh, singing at, at Lawyer Springs at 6. Thank you. Thank you for that invitation. Any other announcements? No other announcements. Ask Brother Donald if he would close us with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this message we have received. Help us to learn from it and to carry forward with it. Help us maintain ourselves and correct ourselves. Let the Lord correct us because we all fail. Watch over us through this coming week. Bless the upcoming services. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. 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 